I am Gene Hockenberry, and the question just arose in my mind. If we go through this process, does the, some portion of the land and the building that houses the tenants go on a tax roll? And if it does, who's responsible for the tax? That's, that's, a, that's a great question. It's an excellent question. Imagine housing is a 501c3 just like we are. So the fact of it is that they live with the same benefits as a 501c3 as we do. What's interesting about Imagine Housing, and this is the kind of is somewhat connected to the a couple of previous questions about financing, is that one, Imagine Housing, which enjoys a terrific reputation for what it does, has never gone over budget on any of the projects. And part of which is, it just goes to the $37,000 fee, they give us the most conservative numbers they can, projecting it into the future. So, they, and so that's important that they say, if this is going to work, we're going to make it as difficult as possible, the dumb numbers, to make it work. So they always come within. Uh, uh, secondly, Imagine Housing has never been willing to enter into a partnership with the church in this situation where they're willing to be half on the hook. As, so if the risk is obviously going through the whole uh, CPA process, or theoretically, and we did have someone from here from the city last week to speak to that, which was very informative, very helpful. If someone wants to speak to that. Uh, they have. They went to their own board to say we will take half the risk in this, which they've never done. So they're pretty as a five one. They only have a limited pot of money as well that they can do pre-development costs, which is why they need their projects to be successful so they can get the money from grants to put the money back in. So for them to say that they're willing to be half on the hook for this is a huge deal. And also would speak to the fact that they have to be fairly confident that this could go forward. But does that answer your question about the 501c3? Yeah. It, does not, it does not affect our tax basis one bit. Hi, I'm Julia Parsons, and I'm the former treasurer, and I was involved with the revi of the last mortgage in 2011. So I'm thinking that I need to state some facts because um, I am a very factual person, I'm a very numbers-oriented person, and when I hear numbers thrown out that I aren't quite accurate, I always like to correct. Sorry about that, but give you the information. The current principal mortgage balance, as it stands in September, is $791,000. The principal mortgage balance at the time that we have to make the sale will be $688,000. With a two hundred k reduction, We'll have to replenish or refinance for another mortgage of 488,000. So I just wanted to be clear on that. Also, in terms of the tax, we're not responsible for capital gains because the portion of the land that we're selling was used for church function only. We didn't use it to make income. We used it for worship and programs. So I hope that helps. Hi, my name is Brenda London, and I'm a relatively new member, and um, I am against the project, which might surprise some people, because <coughs> having been formerly among the homeless here on the east side, um, I have thought of a lot of other ways that the church would be of service, but I, mean, I voiced that in a letter I recently wrote to the church. However, my newest concern is that um, looking at the financial part, the, um, under it says risk of paying $95,800 within a 30 day period if rezone does not happen or funding is not received, um, greatly concerns me because I don't know how we we're going to come up with $95,800 in 30 months plus whatever the monthly mortgage payment is. And then we're also heard that we're in need of a furnace and a dishwasher. So that would be coming into, well, another repairs, another repair back below that, which is $100,000. Not saying that that 100000 is due in a 30-day period, but I don't know, having to put out the mortgage plus the $95,800. 
if it doesn't go through, I just feel like to me it's like a huge risk, and I just don't see how we can comprehend paying that. The, the mortgage exact numbers on that, um, there is a period during what we call construction financing where we would not be making any mortgage payments, but that's, we would still be accruing the interest due, but not making some payments is something that can be very helpful to the congregation given its time on some of those issues. So, thank you. My name is Lynn Wilsey, and with a heavy heart, I'm against this proposal. I think the what of it is fabulous. And one of the things that drew me to this church is the work with the homeless, the congregations for the homeless, the tent city, which might have to go away. My group would have to go away if we do this. Uh, Sophia's place, all this, the open hearts and minds of this congregation. Um, it, that's why I'm here. But what of the project is fabulous? Some of the like design, okay, and a lot of tweaks are happening, and even though the MOA, no, you, it's, it's not as strong, it's the MOU, it's a green to green. Even though the MOU says we would go forward in substantially the same way as it's represented, it sounds like there's still room for change. And a lot of people have ideas. I love, trust, and respect the leadership of this church that's represented the board of trustees. And my heart is concerned that there wasn't strong consensus for this. And I know that they've been spending a lot of hours, and there's been a lot of prayers, and a lot of discernment, and um, when I've had members come to me that are pro and against, I even kind of creeped out by saying I'm against because I'm like a pro person, um, coming and saying that their faith has been questioned because of their position, to me it feels like, you know what, this just doesn't feel right. And yes, I have faith, and I have faith that if we're having to, the, the train it seems like it's left the station, and if it's speeding to meet a Bellevue, City of Bellevue requirement, because they only do this stuff well, I have faith that we, if this is the right project, it can happen in the right time. Feels like the way it's happening, it's, the what is lovely, the way it feels wrong, that's what I'm against. Thank you. I just, the only thing I'm seeing here is the City of Bellevue. I mean, maybe there's somebody who's good at the odds or something. I mean, what is the rezoning? Does somebody know? What, what's the likelihood that they're going to go ahead and say, yeah, let's rezone? Because that's their decision, right? Somebody? Rob Sullivan, I'm one of the uh, board members, and uh, Sybil from Imagine Housing guessed that it's about 8% chance that it will pass. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mary Jessen. I'm also one of the trustees. Um, I'm going to put myself in the category of highly concerned. Um, partially, um, and I'm, I'm hearing from people as well, so I'm hearing comments and, and such from, from various people. But the, one of the things that concerns me personally has always been the money. And um, I feel like we're tossing around really big numbers. And too often it's been this number, and it's that number. No, it's not, not that number. No, we're going to be two thousand, hundred thousand dollars ahead. No, we need that money to buy our, to replace the windows. So I think numbers for a lot of people, including me, are difficult and understanding financing anyway is difficult. But now with unclear numbers, changing numbers, it feels very fuzzy to me. I don't think that's a great way to go into a project where, as we know, there is some risk. So that's, that's one thing that's concerning. Mary, you're speaking for or against? I said I'm not concerned. Up at the board the other night, one individual brought up, have we considered, have you sat down and brainstormed all the projects and ideas and things that other things that we can do? It seems like we've latched on to this particular project. Are there other things, other processes, other pieces that we could be doing? Have we really had, sat down and had that conversation and brainstorming and what has the pros and cons? And we have not done that. And that might be something that is worthwhile. Um, another question, that, a comment that did come up the other night, and I know others have asked it that, uh, for this too. Do we have enough wherewithal within our congregation to see this through? Are we strong enough? Do we have the bodies? Do we have the people? Do we have the time? Do we have the ability to do that? And I just throw that out there. And lastly, I honestly don't think this is a project of whether we're for or against affordable housing, because I think many people know that there are serious issues around this very topic. It's a regional thing, it's becoming a national thing. But the question is, so I don't think the debate is really even about 
do we want to support affordable housing because it is an issue, but the question is more, is this the right project for this church at this time? I'm used to holding the mic, sorry. I'm Amy Corsini, I'm the worship director, I've been on staff here for eight years now, but I've been on for 21 years. I was married here, and our son is in the columbarium, our daughter was baptized here. I um, just love this church. So, uh, I have not had a chance to go to all of the previous meetings, and I was reading through the minutes, and I saw that some of the concerns have been around the fact that we're at a point of transition with Pastor Tom, I'm going to be leaving soon. And um, I just wanted to share that I, you know, I know that many of us are going to be very sad when he leaves. I'm also very excited about the possibilities with a new pastor who's going to be coming on board in the future. And, and recently, had been talking with um, uh, a recent grad out of uh, the seminary in Berkeley, and was sharing with her what we are considering doing. And she was saying that. Every graduate that has this graduated with her right now would be lining up at our door to be here. And I'm, the, the idea of another young person, I don't know that's what the direction we're going to be going, but another pastor that could be here for another 25 years is exciting to me. So I just wanted to share that point of view. Thanks. Thanks. You call me again. I'm here in a position of postpone. Um, rather than totally, you know, let's not do this ever, but um, my concern is that I really have felt rushed through this. Like, in June, we did have a vote with the congregation, and we approved to go ahead with this on the understanding that this was going to be something separate from our actual building that we have here. And then in those few months when that um, was apparent that that was not buildable back there, all of a sudden it became part of our um, upper part of our, our uh, property and also is you know going to incorporate a shared kind of a situation where part of our building will be um, taken away and we will be having some shared spaces. And so this has brought a lot of questions to me and I feel like we haven't really had the time to get all of this addressed and um, the questions answered and even the, the gentleman from St. Mark's said that they had like a couple of years where they were sending out monthly newsletters and, and reporting on what their committee was doing. And I feel like we've had three months to really consider what the impact is going to be to us. And so I just feel that this is really too rushed and we haven't had a time to really consider all the, the repercussions of uh, what this is going to do to us down the road. So, um, and then the other thing was I don't know, you know, we've talked a little bit about the city and, you know, how they might be going to approve or, or disapprove this rezoning. At the meeting on Thursday, it came up that um, as part of this rezoning process, we have to notify our neighbors what we're doing, and they have a definite um, opportunity to um, have input into that. And if all the apartments around us in the community, like up at North Town, decide that this is not something that they feel fits into our community, they can, you know, tell the city of Bellevue that this is not going to work for them, and that kind of influences them on whether or not they rezone. So I just wanted to say that I feel like we, we need to have time to maybe reach out to our neighbors and say, this is what we're thinking of doing, and how do you feel about this before we put ourselves in a position where we might be, you know, $95,000 behind because the city doesn't approve the rezoning. All right. Um, my name is Ruth. I'm four, and before I come with my question, um, I just was reminded to remind us all, um, well, first, practical thing, I wish that everyone had been to the preparatory meetings. I think that would have cleared up a lot of things that people have been wondering about. Um, uh, the second thing is that and no one has mentioned the Holy Spirit as far as I have understood. Um, there, there have been a lot of, and I respect every single word that has been said. Um, my question is actually to David Swartley, um, uh, because uh, we are, as we know, a part of a 
huge family called the ELCA. And um, uh, although you are now not a part of the Chicago uh, headquarters, so to speak, um, I was wondering if you could just tell us a little bit what is the um, feeling in um, both the, the bishop of our ELCA and our own bishop for that matter in regard to a step like this. Well, first of all, disclaimer, I need to let you know that I'm not officially speaking either for the ELCA Church Wide Organization um, and Bishop Eaton or for Kirby End Time. Um, but I can tell you, based on lots of conversations, both at the synodical level and the church wide level, um, that the ELCA is very much interested in what the Holy Spirit is calling the church to do. And is very interested in um, having members of congregations like St. Luke's understand that we do ministry better together um, than we do uh, separately. And I know that uh, Bishop Kirby was here um, talking about what the focus of the congregation will be and um, and kind of challenging um, everyone to think about what the focus will be because you are what you define your mission to be. So uh, he's very outward looking in his um, approach. Uh, and, and I can't uh, speak for him directly, but I think he's encouraging these kinds of conversations and the kinds of questions um, that you're asking. Um, Gethsemane Lutheran Church is located in downtown Ch uh, Chicago, Seattle, uh, right across from the Greyhound bus station. Um, and it was a declining uh, congregation because of the demographics. There really isn't much of a neighborhood where the seventies is located. And they had a parking lot adjacent to it. And after lots of prayerful reflection, uh, they sold the parking lot. Uh, I don't remember the numbers, but it was uh, in excess of $10 million that they received. And they used that money to um, uh, construct on the existing property um, a multi-purpose building that consists of low-income housing, including veterans housing. And in the basement, um, there's facilities that they lease out for a woman's uh, shelter and providing day services. And they actually rebuilt the congregation within this mid-rise building. Um, so it is a, an example. You can't, almost every issue of Luther Magazine has an MIF, Mission Investment Fund ad, that shows what this MIF has done. And they have substantially redefined um, their ministry based upon their use of, of, of the land. Hi, I'm Tomas. I'm in favor. And um, the comments I have is that uh, Amy mentioned most of the reasons uh, that we we're blessed by this church. And one that she forgot to mention is that we we're married in this church. <laughs> I didn't do that one. And uh, I just can't believe. The amount of overwhelming support we got when we lost our son Tommy. And uh, the main reason I've stayed here for 16 years with him, I come from a Pentecostal background primarily, and uh, is the fact that they had so many outreach ministries that it just really just pushed all my buttons. I, I was excited to be here. And then the overwhelming love and support of the church all through the years. I am in favor because I believe that the pulse of this church has been in that direction. It's something we know, it's something we do, it's something we are. We help the homeless, we reach out to those who are less fortunate. A few years back we had this uh, 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 Good Samaritan training. We went into each other's homes and we studied and how can we be a Good Samaritan. And we, the pulse was beating heavy, I felt it. Everyone, everyone was new to the group I was in. I was like, okay, what's next? I was excited. And when I heard about this, I went to as many meetings as I could. I think it was three so far I've gone to. I recorded a couple. And um, I am in an advanced video production course at Bellevue College. And one of the things that we do is record all the city council meeting sessions. And i got to tell you, the pulse I feel from the city council and the city, these are people who are, half of them are believers, half of them are not. The last meeting we had, the city planner came here and he said at about 45 minutes of meeting time that I recorded, a minute and 44 seconds that I, I cut aside was the fact that he mentioned how the city council looks at us, build up our church. We are pioneers, he told us, we are pioneers here in this, in this endeavor. And um, the city council is talking about that. No longer is church just a place to go to see uh, Sunday school and 
to have your birthday parties or have uh, different celebrations that we are used to custom having in the 50s or whatever it was. And we're not the only ones doing it. So if we don't do it, it's, God's going to put it on the heart of others. It's here, it's now, we've had the pulse on it, and we will miss the mark in my opinion. One last thing I will say is that if we don't do this today, it doesn't mean that those who are for and those who are against. God does not want uh, us to be uh, split. God wants us all to be in uh, the same mind. To each of us is given a measure of faith. If some have the stronger faith, if some have less faith, it has nothing to do with it. We are together and united in whatever we do. So if this opportunity passes today, God will use someone else for today. But we need to know that we would stay united no matter what the decision is for future endeavors for this church as a united group. So not, let's, I just encourage everybody not let this whole thing divide us because of the great work we've already done. I am Bill Carlin Hackett. I know many of you, I, should I ask for permission to speak? I'm not a voting member, so I won't say for or against. Um, I was actually on the building committee that built this space. Um, I really don't recall that things were much different back then than I'm hearing right now. There, there was a divided house. There was a fracture about timelines and everything else. But everyone was really happy to get out of that shoebox on the other end of the building even though you didn't really know what this looked like until you got here. So I'm speaking out of that context, out of the context that my wife and I renewed our vows here, that my son was confirmed here. Now I'm in the UCC right now because that's the only pathway I could take to get back onto the clergy roster. Um, but I still think that after more than 40 years as a Lutheran, I'm kind of losing to the core. Um, you know, I was here for worship today, and I have to admit, it brought tears to my eyes because I didn't say that. I am also the director of the Interfaith Task Force on Homelessness, and I'm the only one here with an MOU with St. Luke's. You are our fiscal agent. I work around King County and Snohomish County working to end homelessness. I, I, I go before planning commissions. I work with city councils. I just visited, imagine, Smola City Grand Opening. I was at St. Margaret's Grand Opening, at Francis Village Grand Opening with Velocity. I've been part of the hearing examiner's work with University Christian and Bellwether Housing in Seattle. We encouraged Ronald United Methodist and Shoreline to build housing on this property and sell some of its land to Compass Housing Alliance. So I'm in the middle of this all the time. And I hear exactly what you're saying everywhere I go. And I haven't seen one place turn around and not do what was on the table in front of them just because they were afraid. I mean, we and I were all in together, and I said, well, a lot of people are worried. That's sort of the badge to wear in your person of faith. You get to bring your worry into this room. You get to be afraid together, and just hopefully, as the boss said, you won't be afraid running away. You'll be afraid walking forward. So I'm just offering that our task force is here for you. And we were here for you when Sophia Lloyd was founded in Pearson Hall. I wasn't here when Congregations for the Homeless was founded. That was before my time, but that was founded out of this congregation. We were part of the conversations, and you actually ran with it way further than I would have ever gone, or as fast, with Sophia Wade being downstairs in a place. So sometimes you're just running faster than even I do, which is great, because that's what I need. I can't do everything I try to do alone. Our task force isn't that big. Tomorrow I testify in front of the King County Council about Tent City. Somebody mentioned Tent City. We now have two on the east side. So we have to change all the ordinances. But we want to make them fluid so that a place like this could still host if you wanted. But you know what? There's a lot of faith communities. Trinity Lutheran is now part of Holy Spirit Lutheran. And they're looking at use of property. They're right across from the high school in Kirkland. I mean, Everywhere I go, I tell congregations, you have an asset you sit on that you don't use for the public good the way you could because you're a neighbor just like anyone else in town. You're, you're taking that risk. I mean, I, I met with Kemp Sagerhammer at Gethsemane while well, they were talking about selling the parking lot. We have to walk them through those first steps. So part of it is you will be afraid. Just get used to it. I mean, you've got each other. 
I mean, you know, it warms my heart. I still even have a name tag out there. Can you believe that? I can't cope with it, but at least you can figure out who I am. Yeah, I'm still a member of heart. Thank you. So, and my wife is still an EL State version. So, I mean, the EL State is still in the house. Um, so, I just encourage you, uh, don't be afraid that it goes fast. Most of the projects that I have been part of, they would give anything to have it run fast. Because when it goes slow, and actually building this went kind of slow. How many of you are on the building committee in this room? Some of you work on that building committee. I don't remember it going fast. We had a long, long journey. So, you know, just kind of balance all that out and trust each other. Thanks. This is definitely not my expertise, and I really don't like being up here. But I just, uh, after um, prayer, deliberation, uh, I'm for this. Uh, I'm, I'm scared. I'm very, very, very scared. But somebody much wiser than I am shared with me this week, we can't let fear get in the way. Uh, every time I open scripture this week, it, it spoke to me that we were to be about God's work. In Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 55, 9, thereabouts, God's ways are, are not our ways. And uh, I really think we have to take this into consideration and think really, 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 what is God telling us? He has a mission for us. Are we going to see that vision? And um, just to comment on what uh, Amy made um, reference to about uh, seminary students, most of you know that we have an ex-seminary student who is now a pastor, and he would share with us all the time when he was in um, at Warburg, sharing about what St. Louis was doing. They could not believe the vision that this church had and what they were doing. And they would, their comment was, I only hope we can get involved in a congregation that will step out and uh, do this type of thing. So, uh, like I say, I'm afraid. But um, God has been speaking to me and telling me that I have to step forward and say yay to this. Thank you. My name is Pam Anderson, and I'm a relatively new member here, although I've been attending church here for quite a long time. And I'm on the board of a nonprofit organization in Seattle. And after I got on the board, I came to understand that they own the building they're in, and they share space with affordable housing. They went through something like this 10 or 12 years ago. I wasn't involved with them then, but we actually share a lot of walls, we share the parking, and to my knowledge, and I asked about this because I asked Leslie Thursday night, um, we've not had any issues with residents, or I think some of the concerns that are coming up that people are afraid if we're sharing the space, sharing walls. We've not had any issues with that, and it's been a success. It seems to me, imagine housing is going to be managing this property. That's what they do, and our church won't be doing that. And I would not want the church to take that on. We don't know how to do it. Um, second, when I first moved to Seattle, I lived in the Belltown area. My husband lived in Wenatchee, and he was always afraid that I was living in Belltown some people were out on the street, and I walked to the front work, and I'm like, well, let's do something about it. Let's get these people in housing. And I contacted Ken Block at the time. I'm also an attorney, and I said, how can I get involved in this? Let's end homelessness here. I went to Gethsemane Lutheran Church. It was a very interesting time because they had that property, and they were thinking about selling it, and they were going to get a huge amount of money. We we're not getting that huge amount of money ahead of time. But we went through a similar discussion. I wasn't a member there. I didn't stay there long enough to become a member. But it was an exciting time for them. And then I started coming here. And about two months ago, I was driving in Seattle. And I saw their facility. And I was stunned. I knew they were going to build it up. I knew all that was happening. But until you go see it 
and see it is working. So my last point is, I've been here since 2004. I've been saying, what can I do to help end homelessness? And I can put my support behind this, try to make sure that if we do it, it works. Thank you. Hey, I, I saw, I see a very, very clear similarity. And to David and his wife, Margo, will, will agree with that. 1981, I went to the Lutheran Compass Center. And then we removed uh, the word uh, the Lutheran. We made it the Compass Center. And uh, in 1983, at the Compass Center, when I was the director, we opened a women's shelter on the second floor. There were, there were then uh, 16 women. Uh, down in Pioneer Square, 77 South Washington, in 1985, we needed more space for homeless women on the streets. And so we went up to the fifth floor of this building, and then there were 26 rooms up there for homeless women. And then from there, we went next to St. Uh, uh, Thomas Emmanuel Lutheran Church and built a 24, 28 building for 28 women in apartments. It was all Compass Housing. And now it's Compass Housing Alliance. In 1987, we opened our first home in the neighborhood of near Faith Lutheran Church. And we have neighborhood meetings and well, oh, it was really a, you know, you know where, where the pain comes sometimes. No, <laughs> 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 it was very difficult to do that. We interact with a community that was very opposed to a home for six or seven or eight men who were addicted and who were clean and sober and trying to make their way. Now there are, I think, seven homes like this in the neighborhoods. Rent and Luther Church no longer exists. It was developed by Compass Housing Alliance. Encompass Housing Alliance had its hand in all of the development at Gethsemane Lutheran Church. And also in downtown Ballard, there's a huge building down there with I think 120 apartments. And so this is a changing scene. You know, one of the things I've been doing lately at my age is I always look at the obituaries, especially the Sunday paper. Oh, maybe it was me. And one of the things I've been looking at, a few people are really uh, cremated or, or, or they have memorial services or memorial or funeral services in a church. It's not a golf club or at a fishing club. That's where I'm going. <laughs> I speak for this. The church has a different, a different garment today. It has to have. And I have so many similarities in my ministry of 15 years at the Compass Center. And David was on our board of directors there for a while. But then he, uh, I don't know. You, you also were our attorney, I think, there. Thank you. And they to Paul and Tom. Is it time for call the question? We have a request to call the question. So, is there a second to that? I second. There is a second to that, so we shall call the question. Yes, sir. No debate, we go right to it. So, Carolyn, I believe, and Deborah Brower. I see baskets in their hands, full of ballots. So we need a vote by hand. All those in favor of calling the question, raise your hand. Those opposed, raise your hand. The ayes have it, the motion carries, so we will call the question. Thank you. While the ballots are being passed out, please do not mark them. Do not mark them. What I would like you to do is on the ballots being passed out, I would like you to close your eyes, listen 
Maybe somebody has to put a bell in your hand so you have to be awake for that. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the land for other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are steadfast forever and ever, done in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. If someone needs a bell and doesn't have one, raise their hand. Have you seen no hands that are up? Then I ask you to please listen while we pray. We come before you in humility, asking for your blessing upon our life and the life of this church. We come here as a people, every one of us confessing that we love you, Jesus. We come here as a people who have said that we want to follow you. And we also come before you at times knowing that that path is not always clear. Yet we have heard your cry and your claim upon our life and the claim that you make upon our life for ministry in this world. We give you thanks, Lord Jesus, as you have spoken to us in the words of the gospel, that the unity we find in you is witness to this world to an unbelieving world. So we commend the action that we are to be about. We commend to you our hands as we make a mark. What we commend you mostly is believing that your spirit will bind us together, not just before, but afterwards, that we will continue to minister to this community in the faithful name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the people of God say, Amen. Is there anybody yet that's not sitting in your ballot? I see no hands, so I assume we have everybody. It's like they're on the Denver Lowe. Count for us. Approvals, 80. Opposed, 38. The motion carries. Is there any other new business? Now I would entertain a motion to adjourn with the Lord's Prayer. <coughs> motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Close with the Lord's Prayer. Let's stand. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be